this is a lecture on misalignment detection uh, like we had in the last class discussed about unbalanced detection and how balancing can be done to prevent uh, unbalances. But if you look at mechanical systems, there are many types of mechanical faults which can happen. Uh, one of course is a uh, unbalance which we had discussed and the next most serious uh, is the occurrence of misalignment uh, between two shafts and of course, there are uh, related uh, defect to misalignment like eccentricity of the rotor, shaft being bent or bored and maybe cocked rotor. So, and then because of misalignment or you know, why things uh, become loose, what happens if the foundation has become loose or what we know as soft foot foundation. So, how this occurs in machines is what we are going to discuss in this class and then uh, what are the methods to detect them and then also tell about some things about how we can reduce the occurrence of misalignment etcetera in a system. So, if I was to talk about misalignment essentially in any plant as you know basically we have two systems. One is the prime mover and other is the mechanical unit or the driven unit. Okay. This is the prime mover and this is the driven unit and this is the coupling and most important point here is the center line of the shafts. So, <coughs> Basically, this uh, dashed red line is the soft center lines between the prime mover and the driven unit and they have to be in one same uh, straight line horizontal to the ground. If you look in the vertical plane or if you look in the side view, this should make one sink projection. Okay. Now, <coughs> if this does not happen, if, how do we maintain this? This coupling basically brings about the two shafts together. Basically, this two shafts are brought together by this coupling because I have exaggerated it and then they are bolted the parts of the coupling are bolted and then the shafts are held together. So, <coughs> if this is not held together, we will have certain problems. Okay. Uh, I will uh, come to a description as to in the laboratory how we have discussed misalignment, but before that uh, there are two serious types of misalignment which can occur in the shaft systems. Suppose, I say this is shaft A and shaft B by misalignment I mean that shaft A and shaft B and this is the end of the coupling, okay, face of the coupling. This is one, one scenario wherein this shaft is offset the axes are offset and this is known as to be and but <coughs> they are parallel. Okay. This amount of uh, offset could be about you know 2 to 10 microns or more depends on the speed of the machine. In fact, there is a standard which specifies for a rotational speed the maximum amount of 
missile element and these are available in handbooks so if it is a 500 rpm this will have a certain value if it is 1500 rpm it will be some other value and so on so in one case we have the, what is known as the parallel or offset misalignment in another case we have the shafts at an angle to each other theta soft A soft B. So, this is what is known as the angular misalignment. So, we have the parallel or offset misalignment and the angular misalignment. So, what happens in such a case is this will give rise to certain forces in the bearings because as you know the shaft systems are supported on bearings. If I, this is my coupling they are supported on bearings. Okay. If they are misaligned either angular or offset they gives to give rise to additional forces and moments okay, at the at the bearings. So, we will have a failure of the bearings because of misalignment and then we notice a defect because you know there will be excessive vibrations at the bearings. But when there is excessive virus in the bearings, you know, people are misled that they will say that the bearing has at a fault. But the problem is the misalignment created a fault in the bearing, or in the previous case, uh, like we had seen, unbalances when which went undetected created a problem at the bearings by giving in excessive loads or fatigue loads at the bearings. So, bearings are going to fail. So, to monitor a misalignment we need to look into certain special characteristics of misalignment which I will discuss later on in this class. But usually people in the industry are alarmed by having excessive vibrations of the bearing and everywhere and that is the problem we will face while doing a CBM because we do vibration monitoring or measurements. at the bearing locations invariably people will always say that the bearing is at fault because bearing is vibrating excessively that is the and then uh, if this went unnoticed the bearings would fail and then people will say the bearings failed so my machine failed but actually the reasons could be something else reasons could be like the misalignment which went unnoticed which was not corrected gave rise to this kind of an uh, excessive force in the bearing and then the bearing failed or unbalance which went undetected gave rise to excessive forces on the bearing some bearings failed. So, to diagnose or detect faults in misalignment we need certain special vibration mounting or signature analysis and the typical characteristics of misalignments are something which you will see in the vibration spectrum or spectra measured at the bearing locations. You know invariably when you a shaft is rotating at you will have a vibration at 1 x, okay. but there will be some other uh, components at other frequencies like 2 x, 3 x, 4 x and so on. When you see high levels of harmonics or an excessive vibration in a particular direction we may be sure that this is misalignment. So, let me tell you uh, what we did uh, to study the misalignment in the laboratory. Okay. This is the setup which we are using in the laboratory and in fact, we will be using this setup 
to demonstrate other defects like the eccentricity, like the uh, bent shaft, the rubbing in the shaft, the cocked rotor etcetera. Basically, here you will see uh, this is a motor which is my prime mover in this case and this rotor on a shaft supported at two bearings. You see one bearing here and another bearing here which is my system and this black one is the coupling. Okay. So, the by to introduce misalignment we have this uh, dials here which could be turned around and this system could be loosened and so that we can push either both of them away and create an offset misalignment or if I just push one of them by holding one constant then I can create an angular misalignment. Basically to explain it to you again uh, if you look at the top view of the system is the top view. This is my motor, this is the coupling, this is the drive end bearing, this is the end non drive end bearing. and this is the yellow rotor. So, you know in fact, you will see this two white dials here. Okay. This dials this one dial here and another, another dial here. So, these two white dials they could be turned okay. and then I can force this move it. So, that I will create an angular misalignment and if I move or if I move both of them I can create a parallel miss a line meant. Okay. Now, uh, to measure the vibrations I can measure at each of these bearing locations in x, y and z directions and similarly here in x, y, z direction. Okay. So, these kind of vibration measurements can be done and then and basically this is my axial direction uh, along the longitudinal axis y happens to be the horizontal. For clarity I have just moved it here this point, but this is actually at location A and location B. Okay. So, basically I will have 6 measurements in location A x y z location B x y z. So, I will have total 6. So, these kind of virus and measurements can be done in any machine. Okay. In this case to uh, notice the angular misalignment we are not moving point A. Okay. Now, this misalignment amount of misalignment does depend on the flexibility of the coupling and that is very, very important. Couplings play a major role in the prevention of misalignment. You would have heard of this flexible coupling, rigid coupling or the universal coupling. Basically, in flexible coupling, you should there are elastomer elements kept, which will take small amount of offset. Offsets can be accommodated. Okay. Rigid couplings uh, do not allow per se any offsets, 
but then there are universal coupling wherein these angles could be as high as you know 7 to 10 degrees. A good example of universal coupling is what we know as Hooke's joint is in the automobile drive shaft or sometimes it is known as the propeller shaft. they can take good amount of angular misalignment. Okay. So, the couplings play a major role to accommodate such parallel or offset parallel or offset or angular misalignment between the driver and the driven unit. Okay. But despite having these couplings, we will still see lot of forces and moments coming at the bearing locations. I mean why at all misalignment is a serious issue in machinery because for the fact that misalignment will load the system. So, when I give a power to a machine to run it I am unnecessarily wasting the energy to rotate a misaligned shaft for rotating the same uh, misalignment shaft misaligned shaft and the perfectly normal not misaligned shaft. I will require less power to rotate the normal or perfectly ok shaft than compared to a misaligned shaft. So, I, I do not want to waste power and the other effect is if misalignment goes unnoticed for a longer time, the forces and the moments occurring at the supports are going to increase, the bearings are eventually going to fail and large clearances may occur in the bearings and then things will be loose and so on. So, once we are talking about misalignment, the some of the related uh, issues with uh, the other mechanical defects are, let me list them down, related mechanical defects. One is rotor eccentricity. Other is cocked rotor bend or board shaft soft foot looseness we are going to discuss about soft foot and looseness in few classes down the road, but uh, the reason I wanted to tell you is you know once we look into the vibration spectra the signature of the defects like rotor eccentricity, cocked rotor, bend bore shaft are almost very very similar at times. So, we should not be misled as to a misalignment has occurred. Okay. Though there are means by which misalignment can be detected and then separated out, but particularly at high speeds uh, the behavior is almost similar and then we should uh, at least know what do we mean by a rotor eccentricity. For example, if I look at a rotor By rotor eccentricity, I mean the rotor's center of mass is not at its center of rotation. Uh, another way to look at this is maybe I should draw the figure the other way. I have a large disc ok. This is my center of mass, but I am rotating it the hole has been made here and this is my center 
of rotation. So, you can understand the rotor is going to wobble. and make an ellipse like thing at some point if I should draw it ok. So, this at some point I will have large forces large displacement and less displacement. Okay. If this was a perfectly balanced and eccentric rotor, the displacements at locations like they are called you know the 12 o'clock position, 3 o'clock position, 6 o'clock or 9 o'clock position will be same. Okay. But if they are eccentric or the center of rotation is not at this mass center, they will be wobbling and one level will be less compared to other and here may be another level this is more compared to this. Okay. So, the displacements along the circumference are not same okay, and that is because of this eccentricity in the rotor. Okay. It is very easy to measure it okay. and there is an instrument all of you would have been familiar must have it is a very common instrument in the lab that is a dial indicator or a gauge. Basically, it is a spring loaded stylus, okay. spring inside it and then we will have an indicator which is either a, it could be 0 here plus in this direction minus in this direction okay. and this stylus will be contacted contacting on a surface. If the surface is going to have a motion this way, it is going to swing in this direction, if it is going to have motion in this direction, it is going to swing the other directions okay. and these readouts are usually in micron. So, a dial indicator or a gauge can be put on a rotor which is rotating at these locations. This is basically the dial indicator. Okay. So, by knowing the measurements in the dial indicator at these four locations on the circumferences, circumference one can decide the amount of offset which has occurred and usually these measurements uh, are taken on the flange which is there which is mounted in the shaft. If I have a shaft because the shafts only meet at the coupling. Okay. If I was to align these two shafts A and B, whatever motion this is going to happen, this is also going to have the same motion. So, I can see the dial gauge reading here, I can see the dial gauge reading on this surface and then as I rotate it, they should all get the same uh, reading. Okay. If not, we will uh, have to play around with the system and that is how I will tell you. For example, in this system, we see that the level in this has increased in particular in this direction. Okay. So, in fact, in all of these foundation there are very thick steel plates 
which are known as shims. Shims are very hard, wear resistant. steel plates or inserts, which are introduced right at the time of installation and then we put the foundation bolts. Okay. Similarly, so by removing adding or removing shims, adding or removing shims this can be taken care of and uh, in this system we had the provision of putting shims at these locations if you look here you can uh, remove this is the foundation of this bearing and then shims could be introduced okay and then we can align them as to they are in perfect horizontal displacements okay so, this kind of uh, shimming is done right at the foundation by measuring the radial runouts and these distances which we measure are known as the radial runouts. The radial runouts in the 12 o'clock position, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions should be seen. So, they are concentric okay. and another relatively between shaft A and shaft B they should be also same. And if they are not we have to play around with the shims to adjust the level. Okay. Maybe this is only in the horizontal uh, in the vertical plane you have to move something in the horizontal plane as well. Okay example in the top view I have shims here I have shims here I have shims here I have shims here if I add or remove in one plane I can uh, reduce the angular you can you can understand if, if there are this is at an elevated locations this location is elevated compared to this this will be having a rotation like this the base plane it may be like this Okay. And this gives rise to what is known as the angular misalignment. So, by adding or removing shims, I can take care of the misalignment by uh, either reducing the radial runouts or uh, in both in the angular sense or in the uh, normal vertical or horizontal sense. So, what are the factors which affect the misalignment of course, one is the machine speed because the machine speed is high the forces will be high and uh, the misalignment could be uh, there. Coupling stiffness plays a very very important role in the misalignment okay. as you have seen we allow a flexible coupling or a hooks coupling to accommodate certain misalignments which is required by our functionality. For example, in an automobile propeller shaft. The reason we give a missile hooks joint is because of this fact that if this is my wheel and engine is here. So, my output shaft is at a higher location than the uh, driving shaft axis. So, to account for this kind of angular deviations of course, a, we have to give rise to a coupling which can take care of and that is what is done by actually the hooks joint or the universal joint. So, misalignments are sometimes required and sometimes uh, it has they have to be of course, reduced in a rigid machine and that is where the coupling stiffness plays into account. So, that is why we have the flexible coupling. In the flexible coupling if you look at the bolt holes. I am just drawing 4 bolt holes. In every bolt there will be provision to, to have an 
elastomeric insert okay which can take little bit of radial play and reduce the amount of misalignment these are there kept in the machines to take care of now what are the effects of misalignment so additional forces and moments at the bearing locations okay and these forces uh, can be calculated okay forces and moments in uh, this uh, class on the preliminary condition based uh, monitoring i am uh, not going to the details of how these forces and moments are derived but uh, uh, out of our research work these are there in the published paper and you can visit this website of ours iitnoise.com wherein you can refer to the journal papers in the research section and then see the papers on uh, misalignment basically this misalignment uh, in systems which are uh, which are uh, carrying a normal shaft as to crack shaft etc how these forces and moments are computed and why because of the if you if you look into the uh, this is the x axis and the y axis there will be deflections of delta x delta delta y and if you are looking at three dimension delta z so these deflections because of misalignment and the system already have stiffness so as you know f is equal to k times delta x fx fy is a different different kx ky so these <coughs> delta x delta y delta z are because of misalignment the system has stiffness k x k y k z so we are going to get this additional forces f x f y f z and of course depending on the length we will have a moment arm and this couple so additional forces and moments do happen at the bearing locations because of misalignment obviously if additional forces are coming they will oppose the system so once they oppose your uh, load we are going to have additional power consumption in the system and then uh, because of these forces are changing in direction at every rotation they will induce fatigue load so the problem gets compounded you see a small delta x which has gone unnoticed will create a fatigue load and because of fatigue our systems are going to fail much earlier than they were designed or uh, designed for okay so to avoid such fatigue failure because of misalignment we have to ensure that this delta x delta y delta z are kept to a minimum so how can this minor alignments be mitigated of course you know we just discussed about flexible couplings uh, and then we have the universal coupling and in the industry particularly when we have lot of uh, high torque and power being uh, transmitted or converted we have what is known as a gear coupling gear coupling allows for certain 
and linear movement. of the shaft. For example, if you think of it one gear sitting like this okay, and another gear sitting on top of it. Okay. So, there will be a slight amount of movement is allowed. this is essential because of temperature particularly in industries you know we have the systems rotating almost round the clock 24 by 7 okay and of course there is a amount of uh, force convection or of, so there is a, there are blowers in the fan in the motors okay uh, which cool the bearings but sometimes we have large gear boxes gear boxes the temperatures becomes very very hot so there will be small amount of thermal expansion now if the things were held rigidly you know, both the driven in it and the driver in it they were held rigidly and and the shafts underwent a thermal expansion and if there is no space or no allowance for this uh, expansion to uh, take care of by allowing a linear movement, they are going to bend because of this shaft are going to bend or bow. So, to allow for such thermal expansions usually gear couplings are used which will by the once the thermal expansion happens they will they will expand and then they will slide and this could be few mils you no know, very few uh, microns but nevertheless they are going to take care of this now <coughs> even before this is done you know, this happens later on when you are running the system but once uh, what happens when you are uh, installing in the system during installation alignment has to be checked and that is very very important and the traditional methods are by using dial indicators what is known as the two phase indicator method another is the reverse dial indicator method. Of course, these were uh, the preferred method in the industry wherein you measure the radial runouts in the four different locations that is the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock locations and then uh, try to estimate the average radial runout and then try to use the sims either in the vertical plane or uh, in the horizontal plane or across the two foundation axis as I discussed. And then another method is the reverse dial indicator method which is very very popular, but off late people are using what is known as the laser based alignment system. This is for the fact that because in the previous first two examples uh, first two methods two phase or the reverse dial indicator our meeting and the or the two shafts have to be very very close to each other. So, that we can take the dial gauge readings uh, through a common shaft, but imagine the case of uh, maybe a windmill okay, where the there is a long shaft okay, and then we have this gear box here okay, and then there is the 
alignment here and then we have the fan here and there is a coupling here ok. And this 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 could be about 2 to 3 meters. So, how do you align such a system ok and that is where lasers are helpful. Because lasers can travel straight line in straight line and if I put a reflector they are going to reflect back. Okay. So, imagine if I have two systems one this is one flange and another flange so one scenario second scenario is and this is ok. In first case if I shoot a laser beam ok it is normally incident. So, it is going to reflect back in this case shoot a laser beam it is not normal. So, if this is the normal it is going to come out somewhere like this ok. <coughs> so, if I have the this is my laser transmitter is here. transmitter and receiver ok. I should see a single dot come on this is going in and coming in. Another way if I put a mirror here ok at some point I have exaggerated it I will be getting two points ok. So, I can play around with the shims at this locations, so that I, I align it and then ping it back, so that they all boil down to one point. So, in one of the mirror planes one is this dot and another is this dot. So, I have to play around, so that this both the dots come together okay, both, the, both the dots come together ok. So, the laser alignments are very very helpful in uh, that's re, uh, this regards and particularly you would have seen that when you go to an automobile garage ok. The four wheels of the shaft uh, of the sorry of the vehicle have to be laser aligned ok. Basically, they use this laser based alignment systems also. They have a reflector, they have a mirror, and then they will sh uh, make sure. And then here they can change the, uh, uh, the camber angle and the caster angle, and the uh, there are adjustment bolts wherein I can change the camber and caster angle to ensure that the wheels are aligned. So, the same laser technique laser band alignment system is very popular to do machinery uh, alignments ok. Now, I will come to what is the best way to find out whether a misalignment has occurred in a system through vibration monitoring ok. In this what we do as I was telling you we will measure at any location the axial vertical and horizontal vibration locations. And if you will see if you will go back to the equations of flexible coupling or the hooks coupling hooks joint ok. If I have an input shaft n 
and if I put a hooks joint, the output shaft is actually a function of if this rotate, sorry, this is rotating at omega, this output sh this is the speed, the output shaft speeds will be proportional to cosine 2 omega. Okay. So, this 2 omega comes. So, if I am rotating at 1 x, because the misalignment, I will have a strong vibration at its 2 x in the axial direction. So, this is the most important diagnostic indicator in a vibration spectrum. Whenever we have a misalignment, as opposed to the unbalance, unbalance it was strongly radial, here it is high axial at 2 x frequency. If you recall, unbalance was high radial at 1 x frequency, but let me just caution you this is very, very, very theoretical in the sense high axial at 2 x vibrations. When we go to the lab, we see 3 x, 5 x, sometimes we see uh, even high radials okay, when there is eccentricity with misalignment. So, one has to be careful, I though you know if you go to any <coughs> handbooks on condition monitoring or any trade guidelines, they, they usually give a machine rate troubleshooting chart and which says you know we have to if it is high axial and in 2 x uh, uh, frequencies it is misalignment that is well and good, but then one has to be careful that it is not necessarily always true. Okay. <coughs> so, misalignment detection by vibration measurements generally a high axial uh, level of vibration compared to radial levels okay. compared to radial levels that is a good way to look at it in comparison with respect to radial levels, but sometimes exceptions are there at uh, parallel misalignment and so on. And now, what I, <coughs> what I am going to show you is, this is a case wherein we had uh, the vibrating machinery rotating at 30 hertz okay. and then uh, we had uh, different amounts of misalignment. Of course, we, this is they were all measured in axial directions and we will see usually 2 x and sometimes very close to you know this is a 3 x and 5 x is occurring. Okay. So, what I meant to say is always it is not right to say that always only 2 x will come, but this is characteristically different than the case of unbalance. In unbalance we will very rarely see you know um, things beyond 1 x. Okay. Okay. Of course, <coughs> another thing is we have to take care of the phase measurements. Phase measurements do help us for example, I talked about the band shaft so, in a bearing I have a shaft which has a rotor. Okay, and if there is an unbalanced mass, I will see the vibrations at bearing A and B are in phase. So, phi of A minus B is equal to almost 0 degree, this is case of unbalance. Okay, if the shaft was bent, I have 
in my drawing I am exaggerating this. Bend shaft. You will see when you have bend shaft, this will be close to about 100 degree. So, these are <coughs> characteristics of the phase measurements or the characteristics of the vibration spectra when a missile and case has occurred. Okay. So, to summarize in this class on uh, missile alignment uh, detection, we studied about uh, how missile alignment uh, occurs and why sometimes we have to purposefully give missile alignment. So, that this the thermal expansion between systems can take place and that is why in the industry we have a lot of gear couplings. In the automobiles we have the hooks joints because of the large uh, angular uh, deviations between the engine drive shaft or the crank shaft and the propeller uh, shaft of the vehicle. Sometimes uh, we allow missile alignments because of installation defects you know to few microns and that can be accommodated by flexible couplings. Okay. But despite our best intentions of giving gear coupling, hooks joint, flexible coupling, the misalignment as you have seen will give rise to excessive forces or moments and these forces and moments are time varying and they are periodic and so they are going to induce fatigue loads at the bearings. So, bearings are eventually going to get subjected to excessive forces because of misalignment and again because of missile alignment, uh, because these forces have come, we are unnecessary uh, using extra energy to overcome this resisting forces. So, the power consumption also increases because of missile alignment. So, in an effect um, this missile alignment has determined detrimental effect into the uh, health of the machine which has to be avoided. To detect missile alignment basically at slow speeds we can turn around the systems the shafts uh, at the flange faces and measure the radial runouts. The runouts should be the same in uh, both the systems that is the driven and the uh, driving unit. If they are not the runouts are not we can play around by inserting shims at the foundation locations. So, that and then uh, we can raise or lower the uh, foundations as to the requirement amount of microns uh, measured in the radial runouts and once we have done that we uh, missile align the system. But for reasons unknown to us missile alignment does occur, it occurs in machine and then the telltale sign to identify missile alignment is to look into the 2 x axial vibrations in the vibration spectra measured at the bearings. Typically to distinguish themselves from unbalance, in unbalance we have high radial at the 1 x direction of course, when there is overhang rotors having unbalance we as we have seen there could be also the axial uh, components, but uh, uh, usually in the case of missile alignment is the 2 x axial direction of vibrations which is very very high. Okay. Thank you.